Hi everyone, welcome to the Super Data Science Team update on TensorFlow 2.0. As some of you may have heard by now, on August 13th, TensorFlow made the announcement that the upcoming version 2.0, along with some great changes, is on the horizon, and we're going to discuss a few of them. Although the exact release date isn't certain yet for 2.0, we can expect it around the new year. We have been seeing some awesome changes and quick developments in the spectrum of TensorFlow that some might say have been brought on by the growth we are seeing with other languages such as PyTorch. We're seeing an increased level of users within PyTorch, TensorFlow, and we can't forget Keras either. Now PyTorch is an incredible library with both TensorFlow and PyTorch being used for AI, deep learning, machine learning, and other related operations that each have their own benefits and uses. This growth in the field and both libraries is bringing us engineers and users these benefits due to the continued nature of improvement changes and fixes it's something we always want to see we always want to see updates within these libraries since we have this now i don't want to use the word battle or competition between the libraries but some of the expected changes will be making tensorflow easier to use since feedback shows that pytorch can be seen as simpler in TensorFlow's defense, the library is very large with multiple extensions and modules. At this point, it's kind of expected to have some cleaning and updating performed, and these updates are going to be fantastic for TensorFlow. So all that sounds great, and we can't wait to see the changes, but what are they? We can see with 2.0, some of the main changes are going to include eager execution becoming the default running method in TensorFlow. It's going to align users' expectations about the programming model better with TensorFlow practice and should make TensorFlow easier to learn and apply. And for those of you who are not familiar with eager execution, it's the programming environment within TensorFlow that evaluates operations immediately. As we know, TensorFlow builds the computational graph to run. Now with eager execution, it will evaluate and run the operations immediately, as you can see here, without building the graphs. Operations return concrete values instead of constructing a computational graph to run later. We're going to also see more language support, so support for more platforms and languages and improved compatibility and parity between these components via standardization on exchange formats and alignments of APIs. And we're also going to see some cleaning, removing deprecated APIs and also the contrib module. TensorFlow's contrib module has grown beyond, and this is a statement from TensorFlow, we're going to get into that in a second. TensorFlow's contrib module has grown beyond what can be maintained and supported in a single repository. Larger projects are better maintained separately, while we will incubate smaller extensions along with the main TensorFlow code. Consequently, as part of the releasing TensorFlow 2.0, we will stop distributing tf.contrib. And that may come as a surprise, or you may be a little worried about some existing modules, maybe converting them to 2.0, but do not worry. TensorFlow is releasing a tool and a package to help with backward compatibility and porting code to 2.0. So with the updates as well, graph mode, we are going to see eager execution become the default, but graph mode performance remains optimal for deep learning. We're going to also see the dropping of reliance on global states to become more object oriented. Again, we're touching on contrib becoming removed, and we're also going to have variable scope slated to be removed. If we jump to the link I was discussing before, let's take a look. We can see TensorFlow stating the main changes that we were going through. We also have the compatibility, which is, I think, a key highlight of this to ease the transition. They are creating a conversion tool to update Python code to use TensorFlow 2.0 compatible APIs. So for anyone looking to work with 2.0 or bring it to 2.0 from previous versions, you will have a tool to have compatibility assistance. With these changes overall, we're going to see TensorFlow moving to become more object oriented, especially dropping the reliance on global states and removal variable scope. TensorFlow is also going to become to rely heavy on the Keras API, which is great. Keras is an awesome library with TensorFlow. And lastly, if you are looking to get involved or maybe obtain some further information, they are having a public 2.0 design process, which is a pretty interesting piece of information. As you can see in their statement, shortly they were going to hold a series of public design reviews covering the plan changes. So if that is of interest to you, feel free to follow the link mentioned below here that we can see. 
Keep an eye out for any future updates with the roadmap if you navigate to the TensorFlow roadmap. Here you will find the roadmap. If you are looking for some further information and changes, you can keep an eye out here. You will see some posted information. If you would like to explore further, along with the link we took a look at before, you can see the roadmap that is expected. These changes are expected within the next one to two releases. So you're going to see it with 2.0. We have our mention, our eager execution. We also have some other useful information for reference models. We have the removal of contrib and the deprecation of other libraries. It is expected, as we already have seen with TensorFlow, that the library is rather large. There is quite a few modules and extensions. There is some cleaning that is going to be performed with relation to deprecated models. If you would like to discuss the TensorFlow 2.0 update and some of the related information, what's to be expected, feel free to post below the video. I'd be happy to discuss it. In addition, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It is a great way to stay up to date within the world of data science. I look forward to exploring TensorFlow 2.0 further when it releases, and I hope to see you in any future videos.